Welcome to another episode of Confessions. We are at La Maison Royale in Westlands on Muthiki Road. Um, today our conversation seeks to answer the question of why do women find it very hard to stand out, to be bold and to take up leadership positions and can we break that narrative? Our guest today, Joy, um, is the founder and CEO of Epic. Joy, welcome to Confessions. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself yeah. and you're looking very lovely. Oh, <laughs> looking very good. Thank you so much. Well, like you said, uh, my name is Joy Ateno and I'm 27 years old. I am the smile in chief. <laughs> <laughs> I love to smile even when things are completely um, so hard. Yeah. Then that, that being the smile in chief makes me a lot more happy. Um, I enjoy views, so mm -hmm. like I can see there's, yeah. there's some very wonderful view yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Oh <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm a great lover of children. I take care of 35 children, mm -hmm. so I'm a mama of 35 underprivileged children. Mm -hmm. Um, very proud mom. We were actually having an event this Saturday that was on the 19th of uh, September. Um, it was a celebration of charity where we get the kids to join us and um, just celebrate play, the tug of war, um, enjoy some good food on barbecue, be with friends, play football, have face painting. That's what we did for them on Saturday. I think they were really happy. Um, so I also take care of them in terms of supporting their basic needs. Um, they are in a children's home in Uthiru, that's off Waiyaki Way. And um, another thing about me is that I'm, I like being unique. I, as you can see, <laughs> I am bald <laughs> completely. And you look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. You look very amazing. And I think I was telling you before set that um, I don't think I could hack being bald. <laughs> I've tried a couple of times cutting my hair. Yeah, that means short hair. Yeah, short hair, but never bald. Oh. Yeah. So even rocking, you know, bald hair is like a very confident step. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so I love being unique and um, that's um, one of the things I try to also naturally achieve. Yeah. So, you know, there's so many ways you can be unique. You can be unique in the negative way and the positive way. So for yeah. me, going bald was yeah. one of the ways I thought would just make me outstanding. Mm -hmm. And um, I also enjoy traveling. Mm -hmm. I enjoy responsibilities mm -hmm. i like to take up challenges i really do like to take up challenges hence mm -hmm. epic all right so what is the meaning of epic epic is the educational path international consultants mm -hmm. we are officially registered in kenya under the registry of um, companies in kenya mm -hmm. our offices are located at the western heights building that's 10th mm -hmm. floor mm -hmm. Um, so another view again. Right, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It's the, um, the building where Vera used to have her parlor, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think so. Then uh, we are now expanding in Mauritius, mm -hmm. Rwanda, South Africa, mm -hmm. and soon the USA. All right, so what exactly, what are the details of what you do at EPIC? Oh, at EPIC, what I do or what my team members do or what EPIC does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we start with what EPIC does. Yeah. EPIC essentially connects students, mm -hmm. and those are majority are um, high school students mm -hmm. across Africa mm -hmm. to pursue international education. Mm -hmm. And um, we also focus on post or rather graduating class, mm -hmm. and uh, that means we have students who have just graduated from the university, their undergraduate courses, they want to look for postgraduate opportunities, mm -hmm. therefore EPIC would be able to support them to find or rather identify the right um, uh, school or institution for their educational um, needs. Mm -hmm. And then we also really, really, really value sports diplomacy. We also work closely with uh, universities that nurture talent in sports. Mm -hmm. And so we develop a four-week program which helps 
talented students in, in, in football, that soccer, in swimming, tennis. We send them abroad. Currently, we are working mostly with U.S. institutions right. to achieve that. Mm -hmm. However, we are looking to expand on how we can identify European institutions or Australian institutions, Asian institutions to achieve the same goal. Um, we also have a lot of events we host a lot of recruitment student recruitment events rather so that means we host educational fairs where we bring international delegates from universities to come and speak to students on educational opportunities abroad and of course it also um, expands in networking and you know seminars and conferences that's about primarily what Epic is focusing on. All right, um, Joy, at 27 years old and as a young woman, how did you create a niche, a path for yourself in this, you know, corporate world? How I created a niche through my career path? Well, so first of all, I, I, I've worked mostly with international organizations. I've been in the uh, diplomatic world and I've worked so much with the diplomats here in Kenya. And then I was also employed in, a, in, in an environment where I, I got to understand what it takes to take a step that no one else would take, or even if they would take, how unique can you make the step to be? Now, one thing again is um, um, boldness. So I'm very bold. As you can see, I, I just went from having so much hair to no hair. Now that takes quite some steps, you know, to, to understand how you're going to achieve that. Now the same applies for my career. I know it takes a lot to start a career. It takes a lot to build it. It takes a lot to, to mold it and so many challenges in between. But then how are you going to make a difference? Are you gonna try that one step and see if it's gonna work for you or not? So I tried employment, which worked for me well. Um, then I went ahead and, 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 and learned. I got the experience, I got the um, the knowledge on how to handle different um, uh, professionals and, and also, I mean, the target audience in whatever field I was working in. So those are the steps that made me who I am in terms of my career, how I'm able to move a step forward. All right. Um, what do you think is, is the thing that makes women get scared of actually making these bold steps in their careers? You know, it should be very hard for a woman to actually quit her job and to pursue her passion you know, because of security issues. Oh yeah, security issues, financial issues. Um, and then I think women are not so, they would not receive a no very well. Uh, I would walk in here and probably I need to get a room for $120, okay? And their, their minimum amount of a room is maybe $160. So I'll just walk and ask for a $120 room and <laughs> I would get a no yeah. for not being able to, to, to get a $160 room. But then I would still ask them, why are you not able to get me a $120 room? What's, 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 the bar, what's, what's stopping you from getting me that? So that why in wanting to know um, what you would try to, to, to convince them, if I would call it, right. or how, you, how you'll try to convince them, or how you would try to show them that you deserve a $120 uh, room, because that's, that's what you can get for now. And then you'd be able to get the $160, um, perhaps even after enjoying the 120 you'd find, okay, fine, I can make the 160 that's fine, I'll get it. So... <laughs> I, I feel um, we need to be able to, to, to have an open mind mm. to, to both the positives and the negatives. So I take negatives very positively. Mm. Um, I was just telling, when we were coming here, <clears throat> uh, my colleague, I was telling him, I, 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 I laugh when things are terrible mm. and, my, and my laughter is big. I mean, it comes from here to here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my smile is so huge. Yeah. <laughs> <Beautiful. But thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my smile is so huge. So that, again, you know, I take things very positively. Right. Yeah, not that a downfall is going to make you not be able to move to the next step. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, that downfall is so important for you to move to the next step because you would have learned what you need to do for you to achieve you know, the next um, uh, step. So you, what you're trying to say is that women don't take bold steps because um, they're afraid of, of the no's? They fear no's, I would say. Majority, I mean, even a few of people I interact with, can you try this? No, I don't think it's okay for me because I, I'm not sure how the world is going to view me. I'm not sure how the society is going to take me. Mm -hmm. and, and where do you think this belief or this, um, you know, indifference to no comes from? I think also lack of exposure. Um, now, I, I look at exposure differently. You can be exposed through reading. You can be exposed through interacting with, with various levels of human beings. You can be exposed through traveling. Now, which one are you privileged with? For me, I've been privileged to be exposed through, you know, I've worked with different ages, um, mostly the elderly, and that's uh, 40 and above. Usually in any, any, even my current, you know, my current uh, job, I'm the youngest. <laughs> I don't mean my staff, mm -hmm. but I mean the, my partners. Right. Yeah, they're over 40. Mm -hmm. All of them are over 40. I'm 27, right. so. <laughs> yeah. 27 and doing remarkable things. Oh, thank you. But we still, <laughs> yeah. we still are able to leverage mm -hmm. the opportunities mm -hmm. in whichever field that they need me for or I need them for. Um, so they, they fear women, as we were talking about, they fear uh, the, the, the age differences. They also fear what the society is going to, to, to make them. And then why? Lack of exposure, I would say. And then two, it could be traditionally um, related. Yeah. Like how cultural. exactly a cultural uh, way of how they were brought up. Yeah. You know, mostly we just see men. Uh, doing the big things, men being the electricians, being the engineers, mm -hmm. men being the drivers. Oh my God, you should see me drive. <laughs> Wait, do you think men are a contributing factor as to why women um, don't make those bold moves in their career? Absolutely no, mm -hmm. not at all. Men are not a contributing factor mm -hmm. because you need to have your own choices. A man is not gonna make a choice for me. He is going to support my choices with either a no or a yes and explain why a no and why a yes but he's not going to contribute to why i am not going to be bold he he will give me the the platform i mean the, the opportunity to uh to 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 explore my skills my talents mm -hmm. you know but then he would allow me to 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 to, to grow and and see if he's able to support my my path all right maybe i can just um bring the point closer home you're in an office yeah. and um say someone brings a tea on the what's this thing called the tray, the tray. and then there's like um cups and then there's coffee and whatever tea so somehow in that moment why is it that it almost always feels like the woman is the one who's supposed to serve and actually, in that context, even just to bring the point closer home, a man will perhaps suggest that, you know, Joy, can you please serve us some tea? Yeah. yeah. What do you think about that? Oh. What would you do in that situation? I, I would happily do it <laughs> with all my heart. Mm -hmm. But then at some point, I'd also ask them, so how can we also have you prepare the tea for us or serve us the tea, you know, make us feel um, appreciated over a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. Mm, <laughs> should have more wine. <laughs> <laughs> Could have more wine. <laughs> Do you think that the cultural differences should be brought into a work uh, premise, into the boardrooms? Um, I don't think that should be done because we are a team. I mean, when I get married, I'm going to be my husband's teammate, right. for sure. Mm. Are you seeing me there? <laughs> <laughs> but in the boardroom, you should put aside all the cultural norms and all the cultural beliefs. I think we should, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, everywhere, not only in the boardroom. Right. right. <laughs> so um, we'll go on a short break. And then when we come back, she will tell us if women can do it all. Stay tuned to Confessions with Maria. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Confession. So the question was, can women do it all? Joy, can women do it all? Absolutely. <laughs> so you are, you enjoy cooking, you enjoy cleaning, and so for you it's not a problem, but you still enjoy your career, you love, you know, making boss moves, you know, and, and, and I believe that is something that women have not known how to um, contextualize. How would you, how do you go up? Yeah, or balance. How do you go about it? Ah, uh, so I'm very strategic and I'm also very systematic. Um, in my planner, I would I, I get up at three a.m. My day starts at three a.m. in the morning, so I would wake up at three a.m. and um, you know do my exercising. On a daily? Yes, on a daily Monday to Friday. I don't touch work on weekends. Right. That's a given. I, I close my laptop on on, on mm -hmm. Friday. See you on Monday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But again, that's discipline, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, um, which also comes in our in your question. Right. There's discipline, there's being systematic, there's strategy, and then there's planning. Mm. So I know that I'm a career woman. I know, oh, and there's also a little bit of fun, if I may. Oh yeah, for sure. Because you need to replenish. It doesn't really mean fun, but time to just recuperate. time for you, time for massage. Mm. <laughs> Time for cycling, time yeah. for dinners, time for lunches, time for swimming. I mean, time for so much, you know, family, friends, yeah, parties, social life, wine. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Should have brought a bottle of wine and put it here. Tell me about it <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, just, be, just be a planner. Mm. Plan that you need to be working from 10 a.m. or 7 a.m. to 12. And then 12 is always lunch hour for almost everyone, you know, between 12 to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. So if you are required to cook, go make a meal. I mean, one of the ways I release my stress also, I don't go drinking alcohol. No, I don't go yelling at anyone. I don't, I'm not moody. I would exercise and then I would cook. Mm -hmm. Those two are my biggest ways to release stress. Mm -hmm. So uh, back to your question, cook. I mean, it's 12, me, it's me, it's lunch hour. Go make a meal if you're at home. If you're not at home, then organize. organize, okay, with whoever is back home. I mean, it's just what do you need to do in a day? So if you're not able to plan your day properly, have a planner, mm -hmm. write down what you need to do. Yeah. Most women also um, say that um, because they have family responsibilities, they have kids, you know, they have their husband who's somewhat of a kid. So they don't know how to balance. <laughs> Yeah, so they say everything is everywhere and they don't know how to create that. It's planning, yeah. I'm a CEO, okay? And I, I'm also a, a foster mom to 35 children. And I'm also, you know, a, a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, and soon to be a wife. Wow. <laughs> is that where you have the down? So... <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that doesn't mean that when I have all that, I'm going to be a confused joy. Mm. No, I'm going to plan how I'm going to balance all this together mm. because I have to have enough time for each of them. I have mm. to have time for my partners. That means my career. I have to have time for my, my underprivileged children. I have time. I mean, I mean, I need to have time for my, you know, uh, my soulmate. I need to have time for my... Uh, family, brothers, and, and, and my mom, you know, so it, it's planning. And then how systematic are you? Mm -hmm. Are you going to also con be consistent? That's the word. How consistent mm -hmm. are you? You know that you need to be up by 7 a.m. so that you can exercise for an hour. Do you think there's also something to do with the employee as a woman? Maybe they don't take that bold step of demanding or asking for what they're worth. Yeah, it could. That that's also a reason because you find sometimes um, your staff or even your colleagues who you work with are underneath that that they're under your your position. Okay, um, again, it bounces back to you, not necessarily as an employer, but also as a as senior management, as an individual, mm. perhaps. And how have you been able to develop a relationship with your with your colleagues that when there's something they need to talk to you about, they can easily approach you? and tell you, you know what, I feel I need to renegotiate the contract. Mm. Have you created that mm. 
environment for them. If you haven't, then we start from there, create that environment, mm -hmm. then now the employee or even the, your colleague who's under you mm -hmm. is able to reach you and you can have a conversation mm -hmm. and agree to disagree or disagree to agree. Or is it also a narrative of submission, you know? It could be, mm -hmm. but that again also comes back to how have you, um, what, what, what environment have you created for them? Mm -hmm. is By submission, I mean, you know, growing up, many women have been brought up to believe that um, you need to be humble, you don't need to, you know, fight with the system, you just need to, when something is, as you said, um, a lot of yeses, as opposed to what you said, learning to say no, more no's than yeses. So do you think that submission somehow transcends also into work? Yes, it does. And as women, now, when you realize that this um, being brought up in that way is, is, is getting into your career path, then expose your thinking mm. eh, to, to, to try, you know, explore. Yeah, mm. explore, <laughs> read. Mm. Watch the Oprah's and the Michelle's, mm. Obama's. Empower and, yourself. Empower yourself, yeah, mm. but through exposure, mm. you know. Mm. So if you, wanna tr if you can travel, travel. Get to learn how you can expose your mind, mm. have an open mind. If you want to read, read. If you want to try an, a, a, an eat book, they call yeah. it uh, these cooking books that we get the recipes, the recipes from, so you can learn how to cook mm. various meals right. to impress your family, impress yourself, impress mm. your soulmate, your mm. husband or your boyfriend or your fiancé. Mm. Yeah. Um, so exposure is very important. Mm. You could be submissive. Like I said in our, in, during our break that... Mm. I know I am in power, but it doesn't mean that when I get back home to my um, husband-to-be or to my family that is in, in future, I, I would say that since I'm a boss, I'm not going to cook today. No, I still have a place as a woman. Mm -hmm. I need to prepare a meal. Mm -hmm. I need to make my family happy. I need to make my, if I have colleagues or friends visiting, I need to make them happy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter my position. So, so thrive, be a boss. Oh. absolutely all the way at work but be home and just be yeah. the real you just, just be, be yourself. yourself your character who you are your personality mm. yeah and on relationships um, women almost always thrive when they are single when they get married something happens in that children <laughs> <laughs> husband expectation oh. I'll tell you something mm -hmm. I have a completely different view about um, marriages. I'm not in one myself, mm -hmm. but how did you develop a friendship in a way that um, it's not going to ruin any, uh, your relationship, you know, like you say, they thrive when they're single, but then when they get into marriages, it becomes something else. Mm -hmm. Fine. There's so many challenges that come with, with, with marriages, I would believe. Mm -hmm. I'll get to know when I get there. Mm -hmm. But what relationship, what kind of friendship do you have with your soulmate so that you're able to, you know, agree on, 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 I mean, a woman would probably want to take care of their husband. They want to make sure they're looking, okay, how about you yourself? Mm -hmm. You're going to take care of your children and your husband. Are you thinking about yourself? Mm -hmm. I'm extra busy in my job, extra. I work from 3 a.m. to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. But look at me. Yeah. <laughs> I exercise. Yeah. I make sure I look good. Mm -hmm. I make sure I look presentable regardless. Probably I'm gonna leave this meeting, I mean this interview, yeah. and get to my, 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 my computer and mm. see a disappointing email. Mm. But oh, I'm gonna take it positive. Such is life. Such is life. Mm. So it applies also to your, to your relationships. Right. I, I'm not gonna speak about marriages, but relationships. Mm. Um, how, how positive are you going to, res to receive any challenges that you experience in your relationships. Mm. Arguments are there, okay? As a woman, you, we, we women, we talk a lot. Mm. <laughs> when, when we have something to speak, we just mm. talk, talk, talk. Yeah. The men will stay silent mm. or just, you know, l allow you to yell yeah. or get cranky. Yeah. But men are very special people. I, I love our men. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> and not necessarily the Africans, both mm. Africans and the Westerners, mm. I totally, respect them. I totally find them so, so, so special. Mm -hmm. The conversations I have with my male friends mm. are so 
um, I mean, they're so they're so productive. They're so respectful. You know, they're so loving, so caring. Mm -hmm. Regardless if you're my staff member or someone who is a service provider, mm -hmm. or if you are an aspiring husband, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're my brother, or I mean, it it's just how we also relate. Mm -hmm. And, and how women are going to place themselves in that relationship. That fine, I'm going to have the challenges, but how am I going to overcome them? How right. positive am I going to approach these challenges? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I think that's um, really good insight. Yeah. And I think it's conversations that need to be had in such a way that most of us as women, our mindsets need to be deviated in a way that allows us to grow much further. So in your career or um, where you are at, at this stage in your life, um, you walk, you have meetings, you go into boardrooms, you know, you have interviews. Um, have you, what is your, you know, how many women do you ideally meet with who are founders and CEOs at your age? Women on your, yeah, women that have the same Close to none. Mm. <laughs> mm. I would say it starts from 30. Mm -hmm moving up mm -hmm. but at my age honestly i've met no none mm -hmm. so far none mm -hmm. yeah so what inspired you? i'm talking to mm -hmm. those who are i mean they have they are being inspired to be mm -hmm. ceos and founders mm -hmm. but i've not met one-on-one -on -one any of my age mate who's who's actually doing it and mm -hmm. and you know there's that bit of you're talking about it mm -hmm. and there's that bit of are you actually doing it yeah. okay yeah. so Close to none, yeah. yeah. But you know what? I'm gonna be in support of any woman who wants to know how to go about being a founder mm. and then how to take that bold step and actually actualizing your mm. idea. Mm. Yeah. Occupying the space. Uh, occupying the space mm. for sure. So what inspired you? Uh, what inspired me? First of all, I'm a giver. Mm. I give a lot and Education is a basic need, mm -hmm. and I need to give education to, first of all, the less privileged, and then secondly, those who um, are seeking international education. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then thirdly, I'm just an explorer. Mm -hmm. I like to explore, yeah. you know? Yeah. So sometimes you have limitations when you're employed, mm -hmm. which is fine because you're under someone mm. but then when you're by yourself it's just like the way when you're in your bathroom you mm. sing some some people sing when they're in the bathroom mm. so loud it doesn't matter That's what the idea. voice <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what what kind of voice they're going to pull yeah. but when they're with people yeah you know there's mm. there's a limit right now that also is not a good thing because just be yourself all around mm -hmm. just like i spoke in my true love East Africa magazine interview. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very, I'm less formal. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is a conversation that you probably thought I was going to walk in here with a suit. Hell mm -hmm. no, yeah. I'm not in a suit today. Yeah. And probably you not see me in a suit mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, um, another thing that inspired me is I have so much potential in me, mm -hmm. and and I've, you know, I can I can try anything that makes sense mm -hmm. and is of value okay mm -hmm. not just anything but that which makes sense and is of value how am i going to add value how am i going to impact mm -hmm. individuals that want to um, join me in this journey right. so these are the things that inspired me all right thank you so much joy for coming in just sharing your thoughts into this conversation today Thank you so much for staying tuned to Confessions. Let's meet on another episode.